Terry and Meghan Markle have once again revealed the hypocrites that they are, this time over the subject of online media safety. Yes, and what is being proclaimed their first interview of 2024, not like we actually gave a crap because they've been talking to the media the entire time via People Magazine, Newsweek, other sources. But they are going to give an interview to Jane Polly regarding online safety. And she's also going to talk to parents who have been impacted by the dangers of social media. But Harry and Meghan have zero legs and authorities to stand on in this issue. They cite parenting, even though we've never seen them with their children. Their children are too young for social media. So how can they even address the issue of children on social media when their children are not old enough to be on social media themselves? But then also, you also have the Sussex squad in this situation because they are the worst offenders, I think, of online bullying in the royal space. Yes, there are a lot of royal accounts where I disagree what they go on about in regards to the surrogacy, fake kids, everything like that. I don't like those kind of things. And there's some that do quite nasty things as well. But the Sussex squad is a different beast because they go out and dox people, harass people, online stalk them, all these sorts of things on behalf of Harry and Meghan. They are very, very specific. They say brazen hussy all over their account. They show endless pictures of Harry and Meghan doing things. And they say they're doing this because we need to defend Harry and Meghan. Well, if Harry and Meghan really want to address the issue of online bullying, Shouldn't their first step, if they want to be taken seriously, is to tell their own followers to stop harassing people who don't like them. That should be their absolute first step because anything they say on this is completely meaningless. Harry and Meghan can't speak on this. They need to stop speaking on this or they need to address it within their own community first. But Harry and Meghan don't seem to want to do that because I think they don't really care about the social media safety of children. I don't think they care at all. What they care about is how they have been treated on social media and addressing those issues, the criticism. They don't want criticism. They want basically a totalitarian regime on Twitter that doesn't let anybody post anything negative about Meghan Markle. This has nothing to do with protecting children and everything to do with protecting their tanking narrative, which they can't seem to write the ship for because they themselves are the problem. Until you address the core issue, which is Harry and Meghan themselves, their public image will never, ever get to any better. But Harry and Meghan, again, refuse to acknowledge this. So we are going to explore this bit of this topic today because I was going to go with something different, but I will address some of it here regarding how Meghan, I think, is really, really starting to not like Harry and be worried about what comes out of his mouth and wants to change the narrative, but oh, she can't really control him anymore, much like the brooms in Fantasia. She has started a process that she cannot stop. And so Harry and Meghan at this point are up a creek without a paddle. And we are going to explore this today because it is important to call them out on their hypocrisy and lack of authority in every situation. So guys, if you haven't been to Royal News Network before, my name is Brittany. I provide you all compelling royal commentary. So please hit that subscribe button. That would be absolutely fantastic. And you love if you love talking to me about everything related to Harry and Meghan, we do have an upcoming trip to Germany and the Czech Republic around Christmas. We'll be exploring the Christmas markets and any other palace and museum that we can find. And the best thing about these trips is not just seeing these amazing sites and really experiencing a holiday in a foreign country, which I think is something really, really cool and interesting, but it's an opportunity as well to connect with other people who love talking about royal stuff. So if your family and friends are like, oh, Harry and Meghan, again, I don't care. You can go on a trip with people where most of us, that is absolutely what we talk about. We all come from different walks of life, but we love discussing these sorts of things. So if you're interested in that, there will be a link up above. I would love to have you join. We actually have somebody coming for a third time on a trip. This will be my fourth trip, third time. Somebody who's coming from the first trip, second trip, third trip. So we have multiple returnees, which is absolutely amazing. Goes to show you that people just love this and love this time and create amazing friendships. So here you, Megan, obviously with the Royals sort of slowing down, for the end of the year, or I guess the end of the summer. Usually August is pretty bereft in most royal calendars. We do have the Olympics, so we see a decent amount of royals going there, and there's reports that Catherine and William, maybe, or at least William for sure, and maybe the kids are heading to the Olympics 
sometime maybe later this week or next week. And so that is very exciting, obviously. But Harry and Megan, of course, can't let sleeping dogs lie. They need to push themselves into the limelight. And part of it, of course, is discussing Harry's ongoing security issues. So we had a documentary release, Tabloids on Trial, where Harry whined and complained about the tabloids and how that he is in the right and everybody else is in the wrong and that he is the only savior in the world who can fix this. Very important. Harry Savior's complex. Don't forget that little note. And then we have People Magazine where Harry and Meghan basically admitted that they're going to continue their blackmail campaign of releasing information about the royal family until they are satisfied with their security arrangements in the UK. Now, they don't like lay that out explicitly, but I mean, it's very, it's like hard to not see the blackmail there, in my opinion. It's really, really hard not to see it. It's clear. Like a friend of theirs says basically, well, they're going to continue to do what they're doing until they're satisfied. And it's like, okie dokie. So you're going to basically blackmail your family over an issue Charles can control. So if you want more about that video, I have that there. And I have one as well that I have linked earlier, hopefully, on his whole tabloids on trial situation. And so we do have a couple bits more of that article. I may do a whole different video on that. But let's talk about this CBS This Morning thing. Because this came up and I'm like, oh, dear Lord. More of them talking about things and basically blaming the rest of the world for the situations. So Harry and Meghan have, you know, a program within Archwell that's supposedly impacting parents and helping with their healing after their children have gone through a traumatic incidence of online harm. Now, this is a touchy subject, and it's a complicated one. And it's complicated most severely by the fact that Harry and Meghan have people who act literally on their behalf. They call themselves the Sussex Squad to go after people who don't like them on social media. I've had threats, terrible things were in people trying to find personal family pictures and stuff like crazy things all for not liking Harry and Megan. Now, my thing is, if you don't like Catherine and William, that's, that's your opinion. I can't really change you. I like to address issues of misinformation, of course, because a lot of the, you could call it hate towards the Royals comes from the Harry and Megan side who have no idea how royalty works. I notice that a lot. Most of the time when they complain about Royals, they don't really know how royalty works. And so they're complaining about things based on what Harry and Meghan have said at some point in some way when it's just not simply true because they don't really understand how royalty works. And when you don't understand something, you can make inaccurate statements and conclusions because you don't know how this ancient institution really operates. And Harry and Meghan have fueled that misinformation. And so let's start with the bare bones basic, which is that this is the fault of Harry and Meghan. This toxic online culture that Meghan hates is the result of Harry and Meghan. Because when the news came out, and I've been an avid royal watcher for many years, when the news first came out about Meghan, most people were just confused and like, who the heck is this person? How in the world does she meet Harry? Because they didn't really seem to have any sort of connection. They really don't have anything in common either. And so because of that, Harry saw a couple of articles that were, yes, in poor taste, but he labeled everything basically as racist in his letter to the press. And what this started off was a cavalcade of ugly, negative reactions on social media. And I think this raised the hackles on all sides. So then you got these two different paths. You could call them the royalists and the Sussex squad. And they have been fighting ever since, basically. But it was because of that letter. I don't think the Sussex squad would exist if Meghan Markle didn't proclaim that people didn't like her because of her skin color. The Sussex squad would not exist without that. Because I don't think they would care enough to. If she was white, no one would care. No one at all would care. And that's important to discuss because that is a huge factor in this. The fact that essentially you could even argue because of that letter came from the palace, the palace started all of this. And the attacks on royal reporters got bad. This happened to Richard Palmer. And he has like, I think it's it's still on top of his Twitter where he says, I used to like interacting, but now I don't. And it's, it's dated around the time, sometime around one of the incidents regarding Harry and Meghan. Because Ever since that letter came out, every step of the process, Harry and Meghan have raised the stakes and just regurgitated that racial narrative even more to 
get a a strong cadre of people who can hate anything that's against them because if you say anything against them, Harry and Meghan have labeled that as racist. And both that is wrong and that has developed into this toxicity that they supposedly hate. They started it. They 100% started it. And yes, I did see some interesting narratives pop up while they were dating. And I actually pulled back from some of them because I thought, oh, I, I don't really want to get into this. Especially it started around the wedding reception for one of Harry's good friends in Jamaica and that Megan came there and she wasn't really supposed to be there initially. She kind of barged her way in and all that. I don't know where I stand on that. Don't really necessarily totally buy everything. But so there were some toxic elements that existed, but I think that is because Harry and Meghan started it and then kept regurgitating it and regurgitating it as they went through their relationship. They talk about this again and again and again. You know, you saw it brought up again in Oprah Winfrey, Netflix, Harry's book. All of this stuff has developed into this hugely toxic culture that believes that they are acting on Harry and Meghan's behalf and behest, basically. There have been reports that Harry and Meghan have called members of the Saw Six Squad to thank them for something like raising money. So it's like, so raising charity money means that you get to bully people online that you don't like? No, just because you raise money for charity, that doesn't make you a good person. That doesn't. And I don't like that they use the shield of, oh, we raised money. Look how great we are as a Sussex squad. But yet you can go around and bully somebody else. That's not how this works. That is not how this works at all. But again, Harry and Meghan, this is what they want. And then they have the gall to go in and talk about how they want to protect people online, including their children. And Harry and Meghan lack authority to talk about this issue because their children are too young to be on social media. So how can they protect their kids on social media when their kids are too young to be on social media, except for if their parents put them there? They can't. They, they, they really can't. And People Magazine has this another article out about Harry and Meghan, how they won't show the kids. You know, Harry has been reluctant to show his children publicly, not out of desire to hide them, but to protect their privacy and safety from potential threats. He wants them to lead as normal life as possible without fear of kidnapping or harm. If the friend adds, as a dad and a husband, Harry's determined to ensure the history doesn't repeat itself. Then why are you going on CBS this morning talking about your children? So I have this thing that I've said that people don't really understand the nuance of sometimes, which gets a little frustrating, is that you have two paths. Harry and Meghan should either talk about their own experience online on social media and not involve the kids, or they talk about parenting, being parents, how they manage their kids online and actually be seen with their children a time or two. Because here's the thing. Do you really trust a nutritionist that's overweight? No. Do you trust a physical trainer that's overweight? Can they really help you? Can you trust a librarian that doesn't read? I know that's a bit of a bit of a stretch. I had another one that was a really good one, one too. Do you trust a, a pilot who can't fly? Like, there, there's this thing where you need to have authority on an issue. And the way you do that, you need to both talk about it and show it. So for me, I love talking about royals. So I talk about royals. I buy royal things. I buy royal related things. All these books on this bookshelf are related to European history, mostly royals. And I have a whole stack of books over there that are also dedicated to that because I do enjoy reading on those things. I enjoy history. So I have historical things and I love books. So I cannot live without books. That is a quote from Thomas Jefferson. I have a Roman crucifix snail, which you can't see that's somewhere over there. I have like a whole bunch of things. I love travel. So I have all this travel stuff. Like if you love something and you're passionate about something, you show it and you talk about it. So it's like, I like love my Anna Lucia stuff. So I wear it and I talk about it. And not just because, obviously, it's part of a brand sponsorship, but because I genuinely like it. I genuinely like and enjoy it. I had to send my ring back, though, because I damaged it by accident. But it's it's something where it's like, I love it, so I wear it. I wear I wear these all the time because I love them. I'm actually expecting a new delivery with, with new stud earrings that are a little bit bigger. Can we? I'll have to show you guys out there. But I, I do both of those things because it's like you need to feel passionate about something and be an authority on it. If you can be an authority on it, that requires you to both show and tell. So when it comes to Catherine's early years projects, we see her being a parent 
to her children and parenting them well. When the kids got off the carriage of Trooping the Color, they walked off, they stood there, waited for her, and until she directed them to go inside. Those children are parented by her. She's not letting the nanny do it. She's doing it. Because other rich parents, you could say royal parents, let the nannies do a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to the parenting. Catherine is their parent, and so is William. They react to them. So when Catherine talks about the Early Years Project and the importance of parenting at young years and stuff like that, we believe her in part because we see her doing it. We see her and how her children have turned out. And that is a reflection. So when she talks about parenting, you actually buy it because you see her parent. And that is critical. That is something that you can't fake, that can't go away. That's something that is so incredibly critical. Harry and Meghan are doing the exact opposite. They're telling us about their kids and how important online safety is to them and everything. And yet they never show their kids. Now I get it. People want to protect their children. And there is a social media account that I follow. I, I'm not really a person that necessarily subscribes to this, this person overall, but I follow them just to keep up with some of their royal stuff. And they'll show pictures of their kids all the time and then put emojis over them or like, you know, little, little things to like cut out their faces. Yet we know where they go to school, where they vacation and like all these sorts of things. And I'm like, okay, you neither, you, you need to stop the game. Either don't show your kids or show your kids. This kind of game of half showing them, I find obnoxious because it's either there or it's not. And if you don't want to show your kids, then don't show your kids. There's nothing in the world that tells you you have to. But the thing is, if you don't show your kids, you need to stick to that notion. So Harry and Meghan have decided we don't want to make our kids public. Fine, do what you want. But what you also can't do is make a big fuss about how you're parents and how we should basically buy what you say because you're a parent. And yet, I can't even think of them really as parents because I've never seen them with their children. I've never seen them really interact with their children since Archie when he was four months old. And that is a reality. Again, it's like messaging and branding together with like, you have to have a good narrative and they can't do that. And because of that, they lack authority and they're hypocrites because they tell us, oh, all these things, yet we never see them do X. So how can we buy into that? Because they have the Sussex squad and we know their children are both too young and they don't even show them to anyone anyways. And again, that's their right, but they should really be sticking with the platform they actually care about, which is how people treat them online. They don't care really about these other kids that much. They care about how treat people treat them online. And so that's where they should be coming from and then mixing in with also these parents as well. But because their aims are wholly selfish, they need to mask it in this other issue. And that's what we see. So let's get into this because I've talked about this a lot before we got into it. But let's go and begin. Our kids are young. They're three and five. Yeah. So they're not on social media, Megan. So what does this mean about like this parenting program? They're not on social media. Why do we care? Like seriously, seriously. They, they have no authority. They haven't dealt with this issue. They don't have a 13-year-old who wants to be on TikTok. So, so how are they supposed to know what this is like when they, they can't experience it yet? It's like somebody who's been married for a year wanting to give a marriage seminar. It's like you've only been married for a year. Tell me when you get to 40 or 50. Then you might have a really good thing to say about marriage. But when you're a year in, you may have some things. But it's, it's until you've been through the real trials in some cases that you really understand marriage. And so when you're really young, too, and in this case, obviously, their kids are really young. Again, they lack authority on this issue. Mm, they're amazing. Why do we need to know? Why do we need to know? You never show them. Like, I don't care about the kids. So, um, again, it's, it's that messaging issue. If you want to talk about the kids, talk about the kids. If you don't want anybody to know anything about your kids, don't talk about them. Don't talk about them. Other celebrities do it just fine and keep their kids really private. Harry and Meghan can't seem to grasp that concept. But all you want to do as parents is protect them. And so as we can see what's happening in the online space, we know that there's a lot of work to be done there and we're just happy to be able to be a part of well, you change hope for good. When you're so 
If they want to be a part of change, then they need to start with themselves and their own self-proclaimed squad. This is well known in the royal sphere, the Sussex squad. They are fully aware of it. And so if they don't condemn it, they must be condoning it. And if you are condoning it and yet sitting on your soapbox declaring that you want to be against online bullying and harassment and making a big fuss about it, well, then you're hypocrites on this topic. You're completely and utterly hypocrites on this topic because you don't really care unless it affects you. You don't really care. You don't care what the Sussex Squad does to anybody else online. You care about how it's perceived by other people. So completely hypocritical in this case, completely. Your children ask for help. Someone, you know, is, is there to, to give it, uh, you know, if you not know, to- If you know how to help. If, <laughs> now I have a video where it slows down a bit, but Harry's like interrupting going, if you know how to help. Well, how do you help Harry? How do you help? Cause you don't know, cause you haven't experienced it. And the other thing people have said on Megan's expression, cause I, I said this online, cause it's like, you know, there's there's a couple expressions and she, you could tell she's like, oh, dear Lord, what is going to come out of his mouth? What is going to come out of his mouth? Because she kind of knows he's a dummy. That's why she married him, is that he's kind of dim. And that was part of the attraction. And so she is always so worried about what comes out of his mouth. This is not an expression of someone who's really knows that their husband is going to come out and say something amazing. This is a worried expression. She can't totally hide her reaction, which is pretty poor on her part, but maybe goes to show the fact that things are sort of starting to crumble a bit behind the scenes and she does want to somewhat separate herself from him. But let's go on because how do we address this issue, Harry? Because you obviously guys engage in bullying and harassment online because you condone the squad that does it on your behalf that carries your name, by the way. So how do you want to address this? Let's see. Mm. Well, thank you. At, th at this point, we've got to the stage where almost every parent needs to be a first responder. What does that mean? And I think that's kind of dumb because if you are a really, really engaged parent, you know what's going on with your kids. You know when something's changed. My mom definitely did. But there's, she 100% knew anything time anything was up early or anything like that. Like she's a very, was a very, very engaged parent. Obviously I'm an adult now, but you know, she's still a pretty engaged parent to be honest. But if you know that, it's like first responder is almost an emergency situation. Whereas it shouldn't be like that if you are parenting well. It was kind of like at the event or something where they were like, oh, you know, it's, it's such a pressure to keep up with the Joneses. Okay, so if your children are really begging for social media because you're hanging out with the Joneses, maybe don't hang out with the Joneses. I mean, I know that's a, a tough thing, but if you hang around with like people, then some things become easier. You know, I'm a Christian, so I went to church. I grew up in the church. All my friends were Christians. Like, it, it helps when you're growing up. I mean, not that you didn't experience other things, but it helps to re-emphasize the things you learn and the the shared values that you have if you grow up with in a community that shares those same values. And so in this instance, Harry and Megan, it's like, I don't know if they do. And the first responder, it's talking about like an emergency. So were you not paying attention until all of a sudden there's an emergency? That's not great parenting either. Now, yes, that does happen. That does 100% happen. You can be the most engaged parent and all of a sudden something catches you off guard. It 100% happens. But I think it tends to be that if you're a really engaged parent, if keeping up with your children is a huge part of what you do, then you should be able to recognize these things a little bit better. But also, I'm not an authority, so I can't totally say. But from my own experience, my mom was very, very engaged, knew most of what was going on with us. And so that comes from being somebody who's who's very, very focus. And you didn't really need to get to a case where it was an emergency response situation. And parents hopefully shouldn't have to be that. And part two, because you can also make the decision, hey, guess what, kids? You're not going to be on social media. I've made that choice. That choice is made for you. You can't take that back. This is what we're doing. And being a parent, which which is hard. So let's see how he continues. But you you notice Megan not necessarily super, super happy with him. And even the best first responders in the world wouldn't be able to tell the signs of possible suicide. That is the terrifying piece of this. What? That doesn't 
totally makes sense. So the, the best first response, and she even looks like, oh gosh, he said something stupid. Like even the best responders in the world won't know the signs. But the, the first responders technically in, in an emergency situation are strangers to you. They're there to notice the signs of, you could say physical harm or like mental breakdown, like, you know, if you're schizophrenic or something. They're not there to notice the subtle nuances and how you've changed and these sorts of things. So Harry and Megan just, not only do they have no authority, but you generally get the sense he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's never had to experience any of this and he doesn't know. And so he's sort of like, well, let's go with the first responder. It's kind of like Megan's stupid car analogy. The internet is like the car, guys. You need a seatbelt. Well, I'm sorry, but the internet is sort of like the third level of hell. And there are people who disagree with you. There are people who harass and stalk you, which they shouldn't do. And there's people who disagree with you. There are people who are going to be mean to you. And sometimes, too, it's how do you deal with that? And sometimes you deal with that by not being on it. Yes, social media and the internet can be great. But also, you know, when it comes to pornography, like it can pop up anywhere when a kid is searching for something. And so all of a sudden the kids get a deluge of images that they shouldn't see. And it's so it's it's really, really complicated. But at the same time, too, I think sometimes the best thing to do is to say no social media, like make those hard lines. And that requires good parenting. But we can't really know what Harry and Meghan are going to do because they're not in that stage of parenting. So how can they talk about it when they don't know? They don't know. And it's really about Megan's experience. So I don't think there's anything else here. But it's it's really all about helping Megan, not helping kids, not helping anybody. It's about helping Megan and how she felt that she has been unfairly treated online. Whether for good or ill, that is really her true motivation here in this situation. But let's take a slow-mo look. I was so excited I figured out slow-mo on one of my phone editing apps, slow-mo of Megan reacting to Harry when he spoke up, because this is gold. So watch. So he interrupts <laughs> Megan's face, looks over at him nervously, clutches her lips and raises her eyebrow. It's like, oh. And then kind of the dismissive gesture, moving her hair back as if she is trying to school her features here, because she's like, oh, something's... And then I don't feel like she's really all that engaged in what he's saying there either. And in some ways he doesn't look it, but I just love the initial reaction here. And then, oh no, he's talking. He's talking. Oh crap. What is he going to say? <laughs> and I only say that in part because I feel like the wheels are really starting to come off their relationship in some ways. And this comes back to this idea that Harry's kind of dim and Megan sort of knew that when they married. And she was very excited, though, about the prospect of being a princess and all these things. So she kind of ignored these things. But as time goes on, and if he is as dim as some people have speculated, and I am among them, I think it's getting more and more irritating to her. And I think his whole campaign crusades are getting to her more and more. She's beginning to get more and more worried about how his bad dynamics are going to affect their public image going forwards. And so this is from the series of People magazine articles. And it says that Megan supports Harry 100%, but she wishes he would let go of these lawsuits and be happy and live in the moment. She wants him to be free of all this, but she also knows that because of everything he's been through and his love for her and their children, he can't. She wants him to live in a world where he is not burdened by this. But here's the thing. Megan started this. This started with Megan. It started with this letter that's culminating in this increased toxicity online that Harry and Megan started. And I, I would argue Megan more specifically started because she told Harry, if you don't get them to stop writing articles that I don't like about me, then I'm going to leave you. And so he did. And there's another instance, I read it in the video I did yesterday where she went to the store and she came back sobbing and crying and told him this whole sob tale that we have zero evidence of, you know, that she was being stalked, harassed and followed and that people were taking a bunch of pictures. We only got two pictures taken from a distance. And so it's, it's hard to believe that that whole situation is, is really real. But looking at the whole thing, I think Megan stirred Harry up. She started the savior complex. 
And now she can't shut it down. Now he's going to go until he wrecks both of them. And I think she's really starting to get worried about that. I think that was the result of that little, mm, yeah, you know, very weird expression from her. That wasn't a normal expression given the situation. It was a weird one. But much like Mickey Mouse and Fantasia, she started the brooms and filling the water, and now they're drowning in it. And that is a mess of their own making. They could have gone through this whole royal process so much better if they had made different choices. If they had made different choices, their lives would be so much easier. I even did a Twitter post about this a couple months ago, maybe last year. It's like they've made their lives so much harder than they had to be. It has been their choice. And they have to live with it. And the supposed online harassment and everything they're really railing against was a situation of their own making. Because sometimes people react because they're being bullied. And I think there's things that go back on both sides of the royalist side and the Sussex side. Both of them kind of get riled up. But I think it was because of Harry and Meghan. And they, they stirred all this up. And Meghan needed a willing fool. And Harry played that part to perfection. She needed a willing fool who would go on her every whim. But the problem is she can't now rein him back in. He is going to crusade on this until the end of time. And she's just going to have to live with the consequences of that, which are make her look bad too. Yes, the focus of the People Magazine article was on Harry and his crusade with his family and everything. But when it basically alleges that they're going to blackmail the family until they get their way. That affects Megan's too because they're married. They're married. When you're married, you, sh you share a lot of things, including this, including this whole just avalanche of badness. And Harry and Megan could do a lot of things to shut this down, but they're doing the exact opposite. They're talking more instead of talking less. They're being hypocrites when they should be authentic. And they're speaking with a lack of authority when they should be trying as best they can to become people of authority if that's what they want to be. Now, this isn't always to say that authorities on measures aren't 100% correct or something like that. But when you're an authority on something, it reflects in most of your life. But Harry and Meghan, when they try to be an authority on parenting in some ways, which they're sort of trying to be, it screams as inauthentic because we never see them with their children. And not saying they have to do that. But instead, they should really focus really hard on their own situation, and then they can tag along with the other parents. But again, they're trying to mask their selfish ambitions with the tragedy that has surrounded some families. And I find that abhorrent, to be perfectly honest. That, that kind of thing I just find utterly distasteful. But that's very much Harry and Meghan. And so I don't know if they can change things and make things better for themselves. Because I think they're just going to step from one disaster into another. And doing a another pseudo-cosplay royal tour of Columbia is not going to help them. None of this is going to help them. Because at this point, they need real jobs. Having a charity is not a job. You can work for a charity, but it, it can't. it's not going to pay your bills the way Harry and Meghan want their bills to be paid. And they've said, basically, to pay their bills. They're willing to throw every member of their family under the bus. I mean, here's the other hypocrisy thing. How can they speak as an authority on parents when they treat their parents abhorrently? How can they speak on that? They can't. Again, their whole platform is undermined by their own actions. And that they can't fix until they fix themselves. They can't talk their way out of it. They need actions to do that. and so. Share the kids, don't share the kids. That doesn't really matter. But if you're going to make parenting a key part of your platform, then we need to actually see you parent once in a while. Because if you don't, it's all meaningless words. It's meaningless because we don't see it reflected in your life. And when you can't see something reflected in your life, then why are we supposed to buy and believe you? Because Harry and Meghan want us to believe their authorities without showing their credentials. So guys, let me know what you think of this video. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you oh so soon. Bye.